In this video, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite urban spaces, the Piazza Navona in Rome. As usual, we'll look at a 3D Gaussian splat volumetric rendering alongside the photogrammetric alignment that it's based on. I don't know about all of you, but I still haven't really found a compelling use case for 3D Gaussian splat visualization beyond generating video. Admittedly, it's often quite nice, detailed video, but I'm still struggling to figure out how exactly this technology fits into a lot of the established 3D workflows that I'm familiar with. For example, I've often thought about making a virtual reality environment of Piazza Navona or 3D printing the incredible sculptures that decorate this plaza, but 3D Gaussian splatting doesn't really help with either of those. However, I am using it to illustrate this video and maybe that's enough. As always, let me know what you think in the comments or by email. I really enjoy hearing from folks who find this stuff interesting. What we've been looking at here is the photogrammetry alignment of about 2,000 photographs that I took over three years. I don't really like point clouds for visualization, but in this case, I thought it looked pretty cool, and all of these blue lines that are connecting the estimated camera positions indicate the algorithm's confidence in the alignment. It also gives you a good understanding of the spatial organization of the piazza. As I mentioned, Piazza Navona is a public space located in the center of Rome, and its modern boundaries are dictated by the ancient Roman foundations of the Stadium of Domitian. Ancient Roman stadia, the most famous of which is, of course, the Circus Maximus, or the Grand Circus, were used for chariot races and other games, and they were designed with banks of seating around an elongated track that was curved on one end. Now that we've got some background information, let's take a look at the Gaussian splat visualization and take a closer look at the literal centerpiece of this piazza. Domitian Stadium was built in the first century Common Era, and it's effectively a scaled-down version of the Circus Maximus, that grand circus that was the largest one in Rome. Piazza Navona, as it appears today, is a showcase of Baroque art and architecture. The sculpture that we're looking at now is the Fountain of the Four Rivers by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, completed in 1651. The large church towering over it to the west is Sant'Agnese by Borromini, designed in 1657. Bernini and Borromini were rivals for architectural commissions, and there is a persistent legend that Bernini sculpted some of the figures on the fountain to be covering their eyes or throwing up their hands, aghast at the church facade designed by his rival, Borromini. However, Bernini's fountain predates the church by almost a decade, so it's more likely that the figure throws up his hand in awe or trepidation of Bernini's engineering prowess in balancing the obelisk above him. By the way, if you want to see some Gaussian splatted interiors of Bernini and Borromini churches, check out my other videos. In fact, the four figures on the Fountain of the Four Rivers represent river gods, or personifications of their namesake rivers, the Nile, who covers his face with a veil because at this time the source of the river had yet to be identified. The Rio de la Plata, in South America, throws up his arm as he balances atop a pile of coins symbolizing the riches of the New World. The Danube, the second largest river in Europe, and the closest major river to Rome, reaches up to support the papal coat of arms. Finally, the Ganges River of India holds an oar symbolizing the river's navigability. The enormous travertine ensemble is surmounted by a granite obelisk. Although it's carved in hieroglyphics, they are of Roman authorship, not Egyptian, and praise the Emperor Domitian. Further decorations on the fountain include a horse and a lion who emerge from the central cavity, as well as snakes, aquatic monsters, and writhing fish. One of my favorite details is an incredibly believable windswept palm tree. As if the sculpted dynamism of the fountain wasn't enough, water erupts from multiple spouts, 
adding additional movement and sound to the entire arrangement. Now we're looking again at the photogrammetry alignment. And this is a number of photographs that I took between 2015 and 2018 of Piazza Navona. For the Gaussian splatted point cloud, I really only used the central set of photographs here that are around the Fountain of the Four Rivers by Bernini. And if we zoom in, we can see the connections between all these photographs. So these are, this is the photogrammetric camera pose estimation that uh, is fundamental really to the Gaussian splat volumetric render. If we switch this to be the, change it from the point cloud to the colored mesh. So in other words, the polygonal mesh, we can get a better sense of how high fidelity this is and bear in mind I took a lot of photos over a number of years with a high resolution camera and I was doing this for the purposes of creating a virtual reality environment of Piazza Navona now that's difficult because as you can see I didn't have the the ground in a lot of places uh, so I was really only focusing on the facades of the buildings and of course, the, the centerpieces of this, the, the fountains. So the Fountain of the Four Rivers, the Fountain of the Moor over here. Let's turn off the uh, alignment inspection. And let's take a, a closer look at this polygonal model. To, and as I was looking at this again, uh, I mentioned potentially 3D printing this earlier, and I think that this really would be possible because this actually is, uh, I'm quite happy with this as a model. Uh, it turned out much better than I expected. I took these photos a number of years ago. I haven't really gone back and processed this, but uh, upon looking at it again, it, it turned out actually quite nicely. There's a good detail in all of these figures. Um, Here's the, the Rio de la Plata that I was talking about uh, in the previous Gaussian Splat segment. You can see he's, he's kind of throwing up his arm, and he's resting on this pile of coins. Uh, similarly, the Danube River here, uh, his finger is broken off. This is not a defect of the model. Uh, his finger is actually snapped off in reality, unfortunately. But... You can see this figure reaching up and supporting the papal coat of arms here that is uh, surmounting this the kind of travertine part before we get to the granite obelisk. And then here we've got the Ganges uh, holding the oar with that really cool palm tree that I mentioned. And that's rising above this lion but this palm tree is really incredible for that to be sculpted. I mean, it really looks windswept. You can just imagine the wind blowing those palm fronds around. Uh, and then here's uh, this figure covering his head. But this is the Nile covering his face with the veil or the, 
the bolt of cloth because um, at that time they did not know the origin of the Nile River. So if I were to 3D print this, probably what I would do would be, first thing, of course, would be to separate this from uh, all of this other extra geometry. I would probably even separate the sculpture and the obelisk from the fountain basin here. So this is all water. Uh, so I'd separate that out, create it its own separate object, and then I would probably, using the photogrammetry model as a base or a reference, I would, in AutoCAD or 3D Studio Max or Maya or some other 3D modeling software, drafting software, I'd recreate this basin. It's kind of a um, oval. It's not circular. It's an oval basin. I'd recreate that by hand using the profile derived from the photogrammetry model. So I'd recreate that profile, uh, extrude that around. I'd probably print that separately so that I think something pretty cool to do would be to, to fill this in with uh, resin or some transparent material so that uh, you get kind of that effect of water. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, and then, of course, I'd probably print this travertine part in uh, sort of a, a gray uh, print material. I have a Prusa uh, MK3, so it's a it's your sort of basic fused deposition modeling 3D printer. Uh, it, it's not going to give you as nice a result as a resin printer, uh, but I'd probably print this in a white or a gray material, something that approximates this kind of warm tone of the travertine. And then you could also print the, the obelisk separately again so that it, it fits in there. Uh, you'd have to separate these out and create a, a form for this to snap into, likewise with the base. But what I'm most concerned about here is the, the detail of this, and I'm pretty happy with uh, the level of detail here. I think this would show up well in a 3D print. So maybe I'll, I'll try that out and I'll make another video and post that. Otherwise, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, as always, if you made it this far, congrats. And leave a comment if uh, you have any questions or you found this interesting. Until next time.